In our previous presentation, we learned how to find the time complexity of loops. We learned time complexity of a loop is same as frequency count of the innermost instruction of the loop. And we also learned through an example how to find the time complexity of single loops. The example that we took has i++. This means the step increment is by 1. i++ is same as i equal to i plus 1. So the increment is done by the constant 1. Now in this presentation, we will understand how to find the time complexity of single loops involving the step with increment by a constant other than 1. So let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The topic of this lecture is single loop increment by a constant. So we will learn how to find the time complexity of single loops with the step where the increment is done by a constant other than 1. So let's get started with this topic. Here is the example loop which we took in the last lecture and we learned that the time complexity of this loop is big O of n because the innermost instruction which is this printf function executes n times. And finding the time complexity of this loop is not a big deal because we can observe that the increment is done by 1. Therefore, this loop will run from 1 to n and hence the time complexity is big O of n. This loop is running exactly n times from 1 to n. The reason is that the increment is done by 1 every time. So initially we have 1, then 2, then 3, then 4 and so on up to n. So clearly this loop runs n times and hence the time complexity is big O of n. But what if the increment is done by a constant other than 1? Let's take one example. Let's say this is the loop available to us and we need to determine what is the time complexity of this loop. Here we can observe in place of i++, plus plus, now we have i equal to i plus 2. This means the increment is done by the constant 2, not 1. Do you think the time complexity still remain the same? Is it still big O of n? Here we can observe that the increment is done by 2 and due to this reason, the loop will not run exactly n times. because Initially, i is 1, then it will be 3, then 5, then 7, because the increment is done by 2 every time. Hence, it is clear that this loop will not run exactly n times. So, what do you think? How many times this innermost instruction is executed? Now, we need to determine the frequency count of this instruction. And determining the frequency count of this instruction, is not as straightforward as what we did here in case of this loop. Determining the time complexity of this loop is straightforward because this loop runs from 1 to n and the increment is done by 1. Therefore, the time complexity is big O of n. What about this loop? Let's now try to find the frequency count of this instruction. How do we find the frequency count of this instruction? Let's now consider each iteration of this loop to determine how many times this instruction is executed. Initially, we know i is 1. So this is the first value of i. i is 1 for the first time. After this, 1 is compared with n. And let's assume that 1 is less than n. Therefore, this printf function will get executed. And then after this, i is incremented by 2. This means the second time, i becomes 1 plus 2. The initial value of i is 1. After incrementing by 2, i becomes 1 plus 2. This happens in the second iteration. Then again, 1 plus 2 is compared with n. Let's say 
1 plus 2 is less than n. Then printf function will execute once again. And then i is incremented by 2. So we are in the third iteration and i is incremented by 2. This means now the value of i is 1 plus 2 times 2. We can also write 1 plus 2 plus 2. And 1 plus 2 plus 2 is same as 1 plus 2 times 2. I have chosen to write this. 1 plus 2 times 2. Now what happens in the fourth iteration? In the fourth iteration, i becomes 1 plus 3 times 2. Because in the fourth iteration, 2 is added to 1 plus 2 times 2. And hence we will get 1 plus 3 times 2. Now we can observe the pattern here. For the first time, we observed that i is 1. Or we can say i is 1 plus 0 times 2. In the second iteration, we can observe i is 1 plus 2. Or we can say i is 1 plus 1 times 2. In the third iteration, we can observe i is 1 plus 2 times 2. In the fourth iteration, we can observe i is 1 plus 3 times 2. At last, we may get 1 plus k times 2. Let's assume 1 plus k times 2 is equal to n. So, after this value of i, this condition will fail because i becomes greater than n. So, this is the point of time where i is equal to n. So, 1 plus k times 2 is equal to n. So, this is the final value of i for which this condition satisfies. Now, what do you think how many times this loop runs? We can observe for the first time, we have 1 plus 0 times 2 here. Then for the second time, we have 1 plus 1 times 2. Then for the third time, we have 1 plus 2 times 2. For the fourth time, we have 1 plus 3 times 2. And hence, we can say for the k plus 1th time, we have 1 plus k times 2. Why k plus 1th time? We can observe in the fourth iteration, we have 3 here. In the third iteration, we have 2 here. In the second iteration, we have 1 here. This is 1 times 2. And in the first iteration, we have 0 here. So clearly, in the k plus 1th iteration, we have k here. This means the number of times this loop has run is k plus 1. Now, if we determine the value of k, then we will know how many times this loop has run. So now let's find the value of k from 1 plus k times 2. We know 1 plus k times 2 is equal to n. That's what I have assumed. Now we can easily find the value of k from this equation. We can subtract 1 from both sides to remove 1 from the left hand side. So we will get k times 2 equal to n minus 1. To remove 2 from here in the left hand side, we can divide LHS and RHS by 2. So what we will get? We will get k equal to n minus 1 by 2. So k is n minus 1 by 2. And we know this loop will run k plus 1 times. Therefore, we can say that this innermost instruction will execute n minus 1 by 2 plus 1 times. Hence, the frequency count of this instruction is n minus 1 by 2 plus 1. So, we can observe that this statement is not running exactly n times but n minus 1 by 2 plus 1 times. But the time complexity remains big O of n because we can always eliminate these constants. After eliminating these constants, we are left with n. Hence, we can say the time complexity of this entire loop is big O of n. So, the time complexity remains same for both these loops. Now, let's take one more example. Let's say this time the increment is done by 10 steps. Can we still say the time complexity is big O of n? The time complexity remains same no matter what constant we have here. But the actual value will differ. We know in the first loop, this statement will run n times because here we have i equal to i plus 1. 
So in reality, this is n divided by 1. Because we have 1 here. n divided by 1 is n, so we can write n here. What about this loop? Here we have i equal to i plus 2. So in the division we have 2 because of this 2. Here we have n minus 1 by 2. Now what about this loop? This statement will execute exactly n minus 1 by 10 plus 1 times. Why are we getting 10 here? Because here the increment is done by 10. So whatever the constant we have here, we will get that constant in the denominator. So the innermost instruction runs n minus 1 by 10 plus 1 times, but the time complexity remains the same, that is big O of n. We again need to eliminate these constants and we are left with n. Hence the time complexity of this loop is big O of n. So this is the trick you can remember. Whatever the constant we have here in the increment step, we need to put that constant in the denominator. As we have 1 here, we will put 1 in the denominator. As we have 2 here, we will put 2 in the denominator. As we have 10 here, we will put 10 in the denominator. And every time we have the same numerator except for the first loop where we have n, not n minus 1. So this is the difference we can observe in these loops. If you have been asked to give the exact number of times, then in that case you need to mention the exact result. So it is important to know both the exact values and the asymptotic values. Because in the examination they may ask the exact number of times or they may ask the time complexity in terms of big O notation. So you must be ready for both. So I hope this topic is clear and this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.